Let's put it out like that. I love it. Mmm. What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you from beautiful Southern Albania. I'm about to enter the city of Vlor, one of the prettiest cities on the coast in the country. And today we're doing a mix of attractions and food. So we just finished our tour of the Albanian Riviera, and now we're entering the city and we're gonna start off at Oriko Archaeological Park. Okay. And after that we are going to Monastery. It's a very nice monastery, a, a very beautiful monastery in the middle of island. Okay. And after that we are coming back to the Lungomare Boulevard, which is a huge boulevard, the largest we have in Dora in Opoldenia. And then? And dinner at Fresh Fish Yoni. Fresh Fish Yoni, seafood in Albania, the best. So soon we are reaching Oricum village, which is uh, another part of of uh, Albanian holiday so many people like to have holiday here and other side of Oricum is uh, Karaburum Peninsula which is a military zone and it's forbidden to walk there and to go there but the Oricum, Oricum archaeological park is in the middle of military zone so we have to give our passport to enter inside this part of Albania you have to give your passport so when we enter we have to turn the camera off put it away we have passports and then once we pass through, we can turn it back on. There's only one way to get in here, right? You have to hire a guide that's specially trained for this place, right? Yeah. This is focus. So he's like uh, overlooking at us to, if we try to do something in this military area. So we should have, we should hire a guide always when you visit this place. So this is the archaeological park of Boric. Right here we have a map of the grounds, right? So we're on this mini peninsula. Incredible. So we're starting right here. And this is the ancient ruins. This is the surrounding walls, 46 meters. So built during the Jules Caesar time. Wow. When the seat, when this place was. Uh, so the area where now is underwater is, 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 is called uh, is called the Oric, the Oric where was built the Oric city. So David, something you have to know about this place is exactly here took place three fights between Pompey and Jules Caesar. So he tried, Jules Caesar tried three times because in uh, the first century before Christ this place was still under under Pompey. And uh, when Jules Caesar tried to conquer this, he lost two fights, the two first battles, because he tried to come from the sea. But the third one, he tried another way. He decided to go behind the peninsula and he stopped at Palace, where we, tried, we took some shots. And after that, he accommodated himself near Bogara National Park. And then he made a good plan to beat, uh, to conquer the Oriku and Pompey. This was an ancient fountain that was connected to the Acropolis at the top. So you have the ancient steps still intact, right? And over here, as you can see, it's like a circle. It's almost like a, like a mini theater, but it's a fountain. So that thing was full of water. Next, we're going to check the North Gate. So this archaeological park isn't completely excavated. There's actually like only pieces of it right now that have been excavated. But he said next month they start again. Hopefully they discover way more because there's so much here, right? I mean, there's stuff here, there's stuff over there, and in between, for sure, there's other statues, houses, gates, etc., walls. Uh, last month, when I was here, they found, I, I was asking them, and they, they had found a lot of pottery, pottery. But so far, they haven't yet found any huge statue. But for sure, inside it has too many. And this is the gate. Unfortunately, it's still pretty much in ruins. I mean, huge rocks wall here you can see where the entrance was but i mean it's been it's fallen sitting here for 2000 years you know nature takes over the ground gets covered with dirt eventually grass trees everything starts growing and then you lose the city completely that's why so many archaeological sites have to be protected by unesco or another organization in order to get funding to clean it up and excavate and keep it perfectly intact. This gate, northern gate of archaeological park of Oriku was mentioned by Julius Caesar in the year 48 BC. Next up we're gonna see some of the houses and these houses are like in the rock. Okay so here we have one of the houses so all the houses Oriku was built in this kind of architecture many houses inside the hill 
and uh, you can see that it was paved with bricks. Every house had a well and the roof had a system that collects the rain water and comes all in the well. So the well is still existing today in the perfect condition. I don't know if there is water inside, cannot see. Yeah, there's no water, it's summer, it's dry. My turn to try to lift this. Oh, wow, this weighs a lot. Yeah, it's dry. Alright, let's continue. Let's see some more. In the center of the town, we have this huge stairway, basically Derfith Avenue, right? So we have houses over here, houses over here, and this massive, very wide stairway that go all the way down. So fountain, Acropolis, housing, housing, and all these houses were carved into the rock, and every single one of them had a well. Super smart. Where to next, bro? Next is the Svernes Monastery, another beautiful piece of Albania. Let's go. As soon as we exited the military base, you can see there's a gorgeous beach over here. Like absolutely incredible. The water is crystal clear, it's flat. You have the mountains. And where's Vlor? Over there? That's Vlor? Yeah, yeah. 20 kilometers from here. 20 kilometers, okay. Wow. Perfect man. Let's get some water. <laughs> Alright guys, welcome to Vlor, the biggest city on the Albanian coast. This place is massive. Right now we're on, uh, I guess like the main boulevard. Here we have just never ending palm trees, the beach, and condos, condos, restaurants, restaurants. What else did you tell me about the Adriatic Sea? Yeah, here is the, in Vlor is the border between Ionian Sea and Adriatic Sea. From here up to Skoder is Adriatic Sea. From here back to Saranda is Ionian Sea. So now we are going to Narta Lagoon, which middle of the lagoon is the Zvernets Island. And middle of Zvernets Island is the Monastery of St. Mary, a Byzantine monastery built in 13th century. But to reach the monastery, we have to take a wooden bridge. Very beautiful and it's amazing for pictures, for Instagram pictures especially. So every, and also for couple weddings uh, filming. So we're crossing the bridge now, as you can see, lots of couples getting their photos taken for their wedding, right? Over here, over there, yeah. Three couples. Three couples, like five drones in the air. It's crazy. We just entered the church, and as you can see, it is typical Byzantine church. I love the colors, always the same with the red. On top, you have a little rotonda, right? Yeah, especially like Konostas was so beautiful. So this church is a St. Mary church, uh, middle of the island, Zvernes Island. So here is a priest who take care of the church. There is no, in fact, it was a monastery in the past, but now it doesn't exist anymore as a monastery, only when they have like uh, pilgrims comes here to stay. So they have rooms enough here for, for sleeping. And uh, what does this priest take, take care of the church? Only one. Yeah, and inside you see like lots of different depictions of the Bible, right? And then everything is like really, really old. I mean, just yeah, like very wood old. Especially like iconostas. Iconostas is from 17th century. Let's go back to Vlor. Yeah, go back to the center. Let's go. So it's about a 20 minute drive back to Vlor. There we're going to the main pedestrian street, the boulevard, and then we're gonna have dinner. Let's go, Vlora. My beautiful Vlora, let's go. Narta Lagoon is all that part. It uh, belongs to Narta. Narta is a small part of Vlora. But it's all these type of trees. What, what trees are these? Do you uh, know? This is oak trees. Oak trees? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's like a big bosque. So a big forest, right? Huge forest. So you drive from Vlora, straight over there through the forest. Same thing on the way back. And yeah, the sun is setting. I'm excited. I can't wait to eat. Seafood in Albania is so succulent, man. So good. So good. In love, totally in love with Albanian food. So we just arrived in Vlor and we parked at my hotel, Bologna Hotel. This is where we're staying tonight. And it's right next to the sea. Look at that. Yeah, next to the port, next to the sea, next to the museum, Independence Museum, next to the city center. So everything is around this hotel. And this is the meeting point of the Adriatic and the Ionian Sea. Wow. Man, the mountains. Dude, it's just an incredible spot. And over here, I guess a little amusement park for kids. And this is the boardwalk, right? So you can see the 
the Lungomare is so long, that's why Lungomare, long sea. Oh, that's what it's called? Yeah, it's Italian, Lungomare. Lungomare. Okay, so Lungomare is the boardwalk, and it goes all the way over there. So all the way to the end, right over there. I love it. This is what Miami needs, man. We don't have this. It's not like a boardwalk on the water, like we're, we're doing it, we're doing it soon, but it's not the same thing. Uh, how is this? Uh, it's nothing, it's nothing. It's like a wall, like you don't have this. Maybe we have something more than Miami. So after walking for like 20 minutes, we're here at the public beach and it's a massive beach. So it starts here and it goes all the way to the end, right? Yeah. To the end of this. So, that, so, so it's, it's public beach. It's a public beach. Some parts are not private, not, it's not public, but most of it is private and public and public and private, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, so private to like hotels, right? And restaurants, but that's it. But if you want to stay in a public beach, you have a lot of space. Like for example here, it is like thousand meters square where you can have your own, your own beach, you know. So this is Yanni restaurant. Beautiful. Right here on the boardwalk. Incredible. Great spot. Beautiful sunset. Love it, bro. Where's the wine, man? The uh, wine is coming. One minute, everything could be here. Wine, some pasta, just to start. We are waiting for the chef, for the cook, to cook us some special fish. And yeah, I love the restaurant. So inside, obviously, it's closed right now. Outside, beautiful white tables, everything spread out. Lots of people here. Let's eat. Gazor, bro. Gazor. Gazor. It's a pleasure. Last night. It's the last night in Albania. Wine is Wow, some good wine. And what do we have here? Some bruschetta? Some bruschetta. Let's try bruschetta. So this is our antipasto. Mm -hmm. mm. The olive, man. Olive oil. Because these tomatoes are like super like moist. It's going into the bread. And it tastes very like pan tomaca, which is a Catalan dish. Mm. Mm. All right guys, so look at this. We got an amazing seafood platter. It's like infinite fish and shrimp. So we got shrimp here. We have, these are like like quiches with shrimp. Over here this is like tuna. I don't know what that is. That's like big shrimp slash prawns, right? That's like a sardines. We have figs and we have more shrimp. And I love it, because look at this. Like, what is this, bro? This comes in this, you just pull it out, right? Yeah. Wow. Check this out, delicious. I love a seafood in Albania. And then you just put it into this like, I'm pretty sure it's just like lime and oil. Mm-hmm. Crudo, oh, the best. And over here, we have another crudo, right? So this is, this is more like a, a big, I guess a small lobster, right? Just put it out like that, I love it. Mm. Oh man, I love you guys do a lot of crudo. It's very, very rare in most places. Mm. Mm. So these are sardines, right? This is a kind of fish. Right? Yeah, it's like a salty fish. So you pull them all out, like that. Wow, God, I love seafood. Mm. Oh wow. Mm, super spicy. Hey, put some peppers in here. Mm. All these crudos have the same, you know, same like sauce. It's basically lemon or lime and oil. Okay, my favorite one is salmon crudo. Alright guys, next up I'm gonna try this like shrimp quiche. Look, it literally is a quiche. Put it right here. I'm very excited for this. Wow. So as you can see, it's quiche. Alright, let's try it. Oh my god. I love quiche. It's creamy. The outside is a little crispy, a little golden. Mmm. Do with shrimp. Oh my god. I've never had it like this. Usually it's with ham or cheese, never with shrimp. And then here we have the tuna. Oh wow. Mm hmm. 
Oh my god, fantastic. So it's a delicious grilled tuna. Has a little bit of salt, lots of pepper. Mm. Got to try everything. Next up is the salmon. So for me, tuna and salmon are my favorites. Like my favorites. Mm, so good. Mm. Mm. Blackened salmon. Oh my god, amazing. Every single one has given me a different flavor, different taste. Some of them are zesty, some of them are more salty, more peppery. And lastly, I got these shrimp, and they are salty. All right, so always do this, right? Take it apart. This is more like a prawn. This is a big one, all right? Super salty. Mm -hmm. I personally love eating with my hands. I enjoy it so much. It gives the food the flavor, a, a better flavor in a way. You know, that's what they say in India. One last bite, guys. Mm. This with white wine, oh, incredible. I love this seafood platter. All right, guys, we're in the back and we're gonna see how he makes a delicious pasta, seafood pasta. He was saying it's like, it's fish eggs, salted fish eggs with pasta. I can't wait. Okay, this is the catricha. See the monkfish. Monkfish. Oh, I love this one. So they buy everything fresh. Nothing is frozen. That just came in. The monkfish. Literally, the vendor just brought it in. The fisherman. He bought it, and it's here, fresh, ready to serve. All right, guys. So I saw how he made a bunch of stuff over there, but. What we got here is the gnocchi with vegetables. It looks creamy, delicious, and right here, got some new white wine. Oh wow, it's different, right? Mm. No idea what that is. Parpino Grigio? My friend Gazor. 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 All right, I'm excited. It's been a while since I've had gnocchi. Mm, this one is creamy. Mm. Oh, well, that's good, man. Got some carrots, asparagus. Mmm. What a nice gnocchi, no? I don't know what he shaved on top. It looked almost like a like a cured meat. I'm guessing it's cured meat, right? Wow. Oh, is it my friend? Oh, very good. But we are a bit full, but still the tasty. That's why I'm eating here, because it's tasty. To my last night in Albania, Gazor. Gazor. Thank you, bro. All right, so we finished up dinner at Yoni. Yoni restaurant. Yoni restaurant. Yoni, restaurant. Yoni restaurant. Amazing seafood. And now we're walking on this boulevard. Look at this, dude. It is packed. There's like a billion people. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, it's, everybody's out. Blora is the best, bro. Blora is the best. Yeah. <laughs> Let's invest in Vlora. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we had an amazing day exploring Vlora. Vlora. What did we do? So we went first to Oricon Archaeological Site. No one has gone. Like, no very one. little people go there. Obviously, yeah. it's a little more restricted. Yeah, that was restricted. Then we went to Svernets Monastery and then City Center. And then City Center. We had an amazing dinner there at? Restaurant Yoni. Restaurant Yoni, which yeah. is Yoni or John, right? So amazing seafood. Personally, for me, the crudo was the best thing ever. Like having all the different, you know, the shrimp, like the sardine, having tuna, salmon. I mean, it was nonstop. And then we had a gnocchi and going to the back and seeing just how they work and seeing all the fresh fish was epic. So guys, if you love this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Blora.